Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where we go for songs that came out this week in EDM. How self-explanatory is that? As always, there's a Spotify link down below for all the songs I talk about here. And uh, let's hop into it. It was a huge week this week, a ton of tracks, a ton of big tracks, and a ton of really good tracks. Uh, but first, let's start with the stuff that I believe to be bad. Uh, we'll start with the bad category. And again, just remember, these are my opinions on tracks. Don't take this as gospel truth. Um, sadly, uh, it's the Zach Brown band, uh, the beautiful drug Avicii remix. Yes, you heard that right. Avicii remix, uh, dug out of the woodwork from, I believe, 2015. Um, sadly, the track just sounds a little dated. Um well, because it is, uh, it doesn't, I don't really see any real reason why this track got released. It's a fairly by the books, tropical, almost commercial house from Avicii. And the remix is just, it, it's fine, but it's just on a not great track to begin with. And I didn't really love the vocals from the Zac Brown band here. So yeah, I, uh, did not like this one. And that's the only bad track I thought, I thought of the whole week of all 32 songs I wanted to talk about. The only one I thought was like actually bad. But uh, other than that, we will move into the meh category songs I thought were uh, just meh. You might like them maybe more than me. Uh, we've got Galantis 1, 2, and 3, the seemingly fifth single from an upcoming record. It's really more of the same. It's got a hint of the kind of classic Galantis throughout, but uh, yeah, is more of the same kind of commercial bland house for the most part. We got Griffin and Rita Orta with Last of Us. This is pretty much as kind of bland as Commercial House gets to me, um, which is a bit of a change in pace for Griffin as of late. But uh, yeah, the lyrics follow the same kind of theme that every pop song does, and the drops are kind of just rinse and repeat of what was popular in 2015. Um, but yeah, all that to say, it's, it's not a bad track. I just think it's kind of just boring. We got Fabian Mazur with Take Over the World, the Dusk album. The Dusk LP is out now, and this track in particular uh, was odd for Fabian Mazur to highlight for me. I haven't listened to the whole record yet, but this one project was the, or this one song was on that was highlighted on the Spotify release radar, and it's kind of just a basic uh, garage beat to it with nothing else really. I'm, I'm curious to see what the rest of the LP is going to sound like. Uh, then we got Calvin Harris and Rag and Bone Man with Lovers in a Past Life. Uh, super boring house with a bit of country guitar twang twinge to it. Um, it's a bit of an odd track stylistically for Calvin Harris. Uh, one that I don't see doing that well commercially either. But again, I don't really think it's that bad. I just think it's kind of just boring. You could say it's meh. We got Oliver's featuring Hannah Avison with Oh Me Love, uh, a fast house cut, but uh, not enough to what I would call a speed house song. Um, holistically, the song doesn't really go anywhere. I find that Hannah's vocals don't really add a whole ton as she doesn't really do that whole much to the track. It's kind of just a whatever track. We got Dusty Cloud with Euphoria. Uh, if Hardstyle and House had a baby, um, that would be this track to a T. Uh, but uh, it's... Not as interesting as I thought it was going to get, taking that uh, idea, but um, not a lot to really, not a lot to really latch on to for me personally. I didn't really care too much about it, and I uh, mainly find it as a big room set filler. That's not quite a big room house track, but is a big room house track, but feels more like hard style. It's 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 weird. Um, yeah, it's not too bad though. We got Rez, Can You See Me, the title track from her upcoming album. Uh, I'm a fan of the sound design and creepiness of the track, and uh, I hope the album is uh, going to play off of this a ton, and I actually hope this is the intro to the album. I think this is a great tone setter for the rest of whatever's going to come. But uh, it's kind of an underwhelming single, I would say. It's, it's not one that I feel like should be a single-style track. It's one that is just like, a okay, great, you've set the tone, you've set the pace, now where are we going from there? Uh, and it's felt a little, uh, little underwhelmed. We got Medusa and Varen Jane with Dala Ridala, uh, a short house track with very repetitive vocals, um, just not one I find myself going to return to a whole ton. Um, this is kind of just your bread and butter Medusa. Then we got Marshmallow and Sudden Death with Triumphant, uh, still a stylistically odd uh, like collaboration, but hey, this one's not too bad. Uh, it's got a more steady commercial rhythm beat to it, but in the end, it's... It's really just a little boring, which I found a, a lot of these ones to be that. But. Then we got Martin Garrix and Third Party featuring Oaks and Declan J. Donovan with Carry You. Uh, classic commercial house from Martin Garrix here. Nothing earth shattering or brand new, but uh, a serviceable new track that I got some enjoyment from. Then we got Lucid Into the Void, a space centric DNB with a fair amount of intentionally dead space to go along with the Into the Void title and idea, which is kind of fun. But uh, Lucid is releasing a lot more consistently right now, albeit with a vastly different sound. But um, hey, I'm all for it. If you told me that the alias was bought by someone else and they're going in a totally different direction, I would believe it too. But um, this isn't the Lucid I, I know and love from the past, but still stuff that's uh, not too bad. I do enjoy. 
And we got Fortet Daydream Repeat, a classic Fortet track with a constant percussion for six minutes long with layers of bright synths ebbing and flowing throughout the track. Um, all that being said, wasn't really vibing with this one. I felt the dichotomy of the melody and the percussion was just slightly too out of place for me. It felt like they were too, too far separated from one another, but uh, enough to land on the top spot of meh, I would say. Uh, as we're moving into the good category songs, I thought were pretty solid regardless. Um, we've got Set the Sky and Good Problem with Till I Met You. Uh, way more of a soft rock than melodic track, in my opinion, than Set the Sky has done as of lately. I think the vocals and production work really well in tandem and give off that kind of early 2000s, slightly edgy vibe to it without feeling too forced. So, solid. We got Teddy Lloyd with Gimme Dat, another Chompo Season 2 track here. High energy Electro House with some fun funk elements sprinkled all throughout, or specifically at the end, I should say. Um, and uh, yeah, a fresher Chompo track, but one that still feels and sounds a lot like a Tokyo Machine one, which I'm uh, I'm, I'm enjoying, but I, I feel like we could get some more variety. Give me some more, give me some more Noke, I would say. Uh, and then we got Piero Perupa and Noke with uh, Only Human. Uh, simple house beat and uh, debut for some new faces on Monster Cat. It's a fairly commercial forward track with nothing too special, but has some great production elements and a catchy hook to it that uh, keeps you going. So, enjoyed that. We got Gyro Field with Mile Run. The B E P is out now. The B E P and just B, not B E E. But uh, it seems to be like a kind of B side of the last uh, album that was out in early January. But yeah, this is another kind of sporadic IDM track from Gyro here with uh, bouncy synths and flashy percussion hits. But uh, not as good as some of the stuff I would say from the last album, but uh, still solid. Now, Kuro and Saint Punk with Tokyo Drift. I mean, I've heard a million Tokyo Drift remixes to this point, uh, but this is kind of just another solid one. The Tokyo Drift has kind of just become a melody line. It feels like a sample more than anything, even though it's it's remixed over and over again. But yeah, bit of bass house, bit of trap, bit of garage here and there. Um, it's got some nice funky beats to it. So uh, I enjoyed it. It's punchy beat, just to say, not funky. And then we've got Ace Aura and Wales with Hypnosis. Uh, good melding of sounds between these two artists, I would say. Feels like a true collab. I hear the elements of Ace Aura here. I hear the elements of Wales there. Um, yeah, it's a fun start to an upcoming uh, Ace Aura EP, it would seem. And so I'm excited to hear more of that. And then we got Roman Silver with On the Edge, uh, an early 2000s Electro House sounding track, but one that is just buttery, smooth. It's got a certain layer of finesse to it that I uh, actually thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, yeah, Roman Silver doing a lot more of this kind of longer, drawn out tracks now. It's not that much longer, but you'll know what I mean if you listen to it. Yeah, Kuchka and Flume with One More Night. Uh, Flume has been on a roll kind of producing for other artists as of late, uh, and this one just makes sense. Obviously, Kuchka and Flume have worked together a whole ton in the past, and um, this is a little bit more of a simplistic, wonky track with Kuchka's vocals obviously being the more dominant in the mix because she's the primary producer of this track, and uh, one that I thought was good. Um, I thought it was good, not out there or crazy or super um, grand for Flume, but uh, still solid. We got Dua Lipa with Training Session, originally heard from the Grammy opening performances this past year. Uh, this is the second track from a new album cycle of Dua Lipa, and uh, yeah, it's not as grand of a track as Houdini was, um, but w way more steady all throughout, and uh, one that I don't think works too well commercially. I think Houdini, obviously, is a huge hit of a track, and you'll hear this one all over the place, but um, this one doesn't feel as gripping or immediately like chart-setting uh, as Houdini did, but um, yeah, the mixing is clean, and Dua's vocals and lyricism uh, flow quite well. We got Flux Pavilion, Excision, and St. Raymond with On Forever. A bit of a classic flair with this one in both the kind of electro elements to the dubstep track as well as the vocal inflection. It feels like it came out of like uh, early dubstep days, early like electro dubstep days. And uh, it's a little bland on the second drop, I would say, but I do love the sound design instance all around. And uh, I thought it was a good kind of callback for a, a, of a modern track though. That, uh, yeah, feels like a bit of a classic tinge to it. Then we've got Dabin featuring Trello with the World's Away Darby remix. The World's Away The Remixes is out now. And uh, yeah, this is a liquid drum and bass remix of an original that I wasn't originally fond of, uh, but the remix brought some much needed life to this track in particular. Um, I felt the vocals were brought up more in the mix, which I greatly appreciated as well. I just love the Darby, uh, the Darby little mwah, Darby kiss to it. 
Then we got Whipped Cream and 4-5. Who's laughing now? A bit of a weird track for Monster Cat, I must say. Um, but if Whipped Cream is trying to make a song onto the new Joker movie soundtrack, um, this would be that for sure. It's kind of got two very distinct parts that kind of don't flow together as well as I maybe would have thought they did on first listen at least, but then I started to kind of grow and love it. But kind of got this like trap, rap-centric drop sections and then a more atmospheric kind of soaking verse areas. Uh, where uh, where whipped cream just kind of does like a little eh, all throughout. So I thought uh, four or five's verse was solid, and the production on whipped creams uh, was some of her better stuff. So I actually really enjoyed this one. Then we got Andrew Bayer and Rob Tyra with uh, Fear of Losing You. The Places I Belong EP is out now on Ophelia, I believe. And um, yeah, this is trance for the modern EDM landscape. Uh, this is a great blend of the iconic trance sound with a more commercially viable tone to it. And I uh, am a fan of this one. Then we got Thirst and Nufori with Calling, a hyper trance drift funk fusion that sounds pretty much exactly as one would have assumed between these kind of two niche subgenres and artists. Um, and one that you like, sometimes in your head, you know how you go like, oh, this is what these two things should sound like together. This is what that sounded like to me. If you think of hypertrance and drift funk, this is what that sounds like to me. Um, you could like pretty much have plucked this straight out of a Dance Dance Revolution or Geometry Dash song. And uh, yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed this one quite a bit. And uh, wow, more trance. Uh, lots of trance this week. We've got Moa and Turquoise Death with Trance 708 uh, Opaque Crop. And um, yeah, this is a longer nine and a half minute uplifting trance journey uh, in a style that feels a little bit more uncommon for uh, today's EDM landscape. It's got hints of electro and drum and bass throughout and uh, surprisingly keeps its energy for pretty much the whole time of the track, pretty much the whole almost 10 minutes. Um, and one of the better trance songs I think I've heard of this side of the 2020s personally. So this was a, a good listen for sure. We got Cosmos Midnight featuring Frank Moody with Fantasy. I mean, what do you really expect from Cosmos Midnight at this point? They are fantastic. This track is fantastic. It's groovy. It's lighthearted. It is some of their best instrumentation I think I've heard in the last little bit. So, way to go, Cosmos Midnight. And with that, we're moving into the standout category. We've got three songs in standout. Three songs I thought were a cut above the rest. And we're starting with John Summit and Halo with Shiver. Um, now, this is some excellent John Summit. I hadn't been uh, so over the edge about uh, uh, his stuff, but uh, man, uh, Halo has given it her all, and John's production is quite magical. It's a progressive house track through and through, as one would expect it to be, but um, this is just one of the better ones I think I've heard to date from him specifically and in progressive house from the last little bit. Uh, it's an earworm for sure. It's got great mixing, and one of the few times a by-the-book song structure I think really works for it because I'm eagerly anticipating each new movement of the track because it's being set up um, and dunked on so marvelously uh, in a good way. So a uh, great track, John Summit. And then we've got Subtronics featuring Crooked Bangs uh, with Dreams, the Plasma Refix. Reflex is the other title for it, but uh, yeah, the Tesseract LP album's out now by Subtronics, and this is a super unique track. Um, it's got some quaint little synth plucks, and it reminds me a lot of what Chime did on Intermolecular Lullaby, with kind of like this electronic ASMR vibe to it, with like uh, a sound of, rather than having a big drop, it's a very kind of small drop, but also works really quite well. Uh, and yeah, when it comes around for the final movement of the track too, it's like the seemingly carnival sound design that plays a lot off of the sounds and melodies of the first drop. Thought it was a great track. I'm really excited to get into the rest of that LP when I can. And my number one song of the week is Have with Portal. Deadly, heart-pounding, destructive drum and bass. Um, this is some of Have's best. Like This probably is my favorite Have track to date. I can't think of any other one that I enjoy more than this one. I just think it's it's him to a T. I think it's just, or them to a T. It's fully fleshed out. I just, I'm loving this track. Um, it's, it is a little short, uh, but it's oh so sweet in that sense. So, uh, But yeah, that has been This Week in EDM. Let me know if you think of any and all of these songs. It was a massive week. So let me know in that comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.